Good morning, folks. Mid-October, the gravity measuring satellite set to run out of fuel and begin falling towards Earth. Should take two to three weeks after the fuel deficit for it to fall all the way, so we may actually be looking at early November for this one. The Arctic sea ice is in the news again. This time they're rewriting the average ranges to accommodate a more extreme climate. Long story short, they now recognize a much broader range of averages, suggesting they recognize the larger swings back and forth, making 2013 within the two standard deviations of the model. By the way, the ice tracker indicates that the trough is ending this year up north. The sea ice is now being regained. Kicking to Tasmania, where we see a healthy low-pressure cell made a visit. It's now set on its way to the South Island of New Zealand. The controlling pressure in Europe is about to crest onto Spain. Leading east edge will bring the first line of storms. How about this for a temperature differential? The Genesis is a power low that is synergistic with a low to the north of it, combining to pull gulf moisture way up there and drive way northern colder air south at the western edge. That's how you get those temperature shifts, the storms where they meet and, in the case of cold, major snowfall. More global weather at the end of the video. The sunspot situation is just the big boring guy down south in this twisting, morphing, magnetic mess up north that refuses to fire any solar flares. Talk about squandering your talents. Look at this polarity mashed together at the left side umbral groups. Unbelievable to have such low flaring. They realized how hard it was to see their magnetic connectivity, so they've now outlined the connections with backside points having dotted outlines, Venus and Mercury sharing a magnetic connection to the sun at the moment. Solar wind density is holding while the speed of the plasma falls. It's a recipe for some quiet geomagnetic conditions. If we can hop to Stellarium for one second, this is a free internet download by the way, and if you search for C-2012 S1 Ison, you'll see it right next to Mars in the pre-sunrise sky. Let's take a look now at JPL because Ison's first test is less than a week away. Let me center in on Mars and twist around so we can visualize the motion into the system. Now from Saturday night through the beginning of October, ISON will encounter Mars near directly over the North Pole. NASA's JPL and indeed all orbital diagrams relied upon do not factor planetary encounter circumstances, so it'll be interesting to see what changes by this time next week. Could be nothing, but if it discharges, it's everything. Anyway, not like we don't have coronal hole power to keep track of right now, the Earth-facing opening looks like this, top left. Now, let's go back to the morning after the Pakistan quake. The power had faded, and we called it that way, but within two hours of reporting that news, the power returned. It is lasting still, now on a slight decline. We took a seven-pointer in Peru, and a six-pointer much later in Mexico that was downgraded recently to 5.7. Also worthwhile to notice the unusual North Atlantic rumbling. Remember, this is close to the ancient mantle plume earthquake hotspot. Coronal holes are still earth-facing, and there's still moderate coronal hole power. The sunspot has the recipe for flares, and the earth-facing filaments need to hang on for dear life. Shots of our star and our weather to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.